Okay, I wanted to just do a, a quick video demonstration of how to back up an entire Arxiv UDP data store with all the dedupe data, etc., to the Starwind virtual tape library, which I have configured here. Um, and then also how to restore the entire data store. And we'll also look at how you can do incremental backups of the said data store as well. So here is my data store. And you can see that it is um, space occupied is 25 gigs. It's got your know, stored data in 99 gigs. So it's not particularly large for a data store, but it's okay for the demonstration purposes. Um, to back it up, I'm going to use Arxiv Backup. And I'm just going to go through the, the backup wizard. I'm going to choose to do a normal backup. I'll choose my source, which is going to be my Arxiv UDP recovery point server. And my server is already, um, my UDP appliance is already in here. So I just need to uh, um, extend this. Um, you can see here, I have some servers that are being backed up to the appliance and I could back up the latest recovery point just simply by selecting one of these um, options but if I want to back up the entire data store I'm going to select this folder here and that is actually going to grab the four folders that make up the data store you can actually see over here we've got the common folder we've got the data whole folder the hash folder index and also the, the expanded folder of the data store which is, this is an, actually an Arxiv appliance. That's how it uh, how it uses the additional storage. Um, choose my schedule. Um, obviously, this is a, you know something you could choose to repeat um, every day, every week. I mean, you wouldn't do it every day, but maybe once a month might be um, uh, possible. Or you may look at doing incrementals as well, which I'm not going to get into just yet. Um, um, choose my destination. You can see here I have a tape library, which is the Starwind VTL, um, with a whole bunch of tapes here. And I'm just going to choose um, to use that group. I'm going to go to my options and set a couple of things. One particularly is I do need to say use VSS and revert. No, we don't want to revert to traditional if VSS fails. We do need to use VSS. And that's pretty much the only one I need to put in there. There is an option to export tapes after the job. Um, and also um, there is an eject media option here as well. Um, what that will do is, is we'll obviously eject the tape within the Starwind VTL management console so it will no longer be listed here as available tape it will move to the offline shelf and if you've configured the cloud replication will actually automatically copy the tape to the cloud um, as you can see I've got a, a, a collection of tapes here that have already been synced to the cloud um, so once I click OK I can then submit that job and I was going to type in the name of UDP data store okay and I'm just gonna say run that now you can see this is the actual backup task and you can see that it is starting the process if I double click on this it will bring up this uh, further um, window it gives a bit more information about the, the process. It's 25 gigs, it's going to take a bit of time, so I'll pause the video there. Okay, the, the backup has completed, and I can see here that the tape name is shown, the serial number of the tape, I should say, and I can view that tape in my uh, uh, Starwing console, it's actually saying 31 gigs. There was a little bit more data actually in the backup set uh, from my previous playing with the uh, the system, but uh, that's okay. Um, 
I can just go through a restore process and restore basically to the same appliance but to a different folder. Um, now, for some reason, we still need to do a re restore by session when we're restoring the UDP data stores, um, or at least that's what Arc Serve tell us in their documentation. So I'm just going to browse that session that was taken today and select my um, three locations that I've got, I was using, which is something on the W drive, the X drive, and the Y drive. Um, choose my destination. I'm not going to restore to the original location because that would actually overwrite the data store that I've got. So I'm just going to browse somewhere to put them. Again, these are not particularly large files, not large folders. Um, so I'll just choose my W drive and then add a folder called restore and choose my schedule and just once and submit and letting me know that these tapes are going to be needed. That's okay. Restore, run now. You can see it's mounted and you can see it's now restoring the files. And as before, it's going to take a bit of time to complete that restore. So I'll pause the video. Okay, the restore has completed. And if I bring up Explore, I can actually see the folders that have been restored for this particular data store. You can now use the UDB console to actually uh, mount that data store. So I'm just going to use the import data store option and browse for the common folder. Oh. And type in the, the encryption password for the data store which is of course the same encryption password of the original data store. Uh, you can see the folders, the folders um, for the data and the index and the hash are actually pointing to the old location. And certainly if you were going to run with this data store to, to complete backups, you would want to move the hash onto SSD. Um, but for now, I'm just going to change these locations to point to the restore the restore location, um, which is on the W drive. Restore access index common uh, oh, data, and similarly, I can do the same with. index and the same with the hash I'm not going to run backups to this data store so it doesn't matter that the hash is not on SSD um, that's pretty much it I can change a couple of settings here if I wish to if I was going to use it for a production backup but I'm not so I'll just click OK There you go. It's warning me that I needed to stop the the um, the other data store first. So what I might do is just open it in another window, another tab, and stop the other data store. Quite obvious, really. You can't have two data stores with the same name running at the same time. So I'm just going to stop that data store. stopped go back here and let's see if I can just try that again now it's warning me that the data store with the same ID already exists on the current server do I want to overwrite it again for demonstration purposes I'm happy to do that ok 
Okay, that is my data store now starting. You can see it is the data store that is contained within the restore folder. And of course, if I, if I browse the data store, I'll see my, my two servers that I'm backing up on the recovery points.